I've been checking out the brake parts a little bit. I think it's serviceable. I don't have a lot of confidence in them. Most of these pistons were seized. And I was able to push a punch down through the hole in here and pushed the, the piston out. Let me see if I can, this is not working. There we go. I got these pistons free. I look at the seals and they look okay. Not great, but okay. I look in the cylinder. It looks okay. <laughs> Not great, but okay. I'm going to see if I can salvage these, but that'll allow me to make the decision without preemptively buying a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Trying to not spend a lot of money. So we'll go that route. I am going to replace that bleeder valve. But anyway, I've been looking at that kind of thing on the brakes. Need to clean this stuff up. This isn't the nicest master cylinder, but it seems again like it's kind of sort of okay. There's a little bit of a spot inside there that I'm not terribly happy with and the seals look all right. This should clean up okay. This doesn't seem to have any leaks, so we'll see. I'll clean that guy up and uh, reinstall everything and see what happens. I just wanna make sure that everything is serviceable. Top notch would be nice, but I'm about $400 away from that. So I'm just gonna start with everything serviceable. Okay, <clears throat> been doing some sandblasting. Quite a bit actually, a lot more than I thought it would take. But I got the rims, including the spare, all sandblasted, the drums, the hubcaps just for fun, and the backing plates. So all these, need paint i need to do the rivets and then i need to degrease all of those parts and etch all of those parts with that it's not muriatic acid it's uh oh i can't remember with the acid etch thing it's not muriatic it's potassium is the word that comes to mind and obviously that's not it but it's just this real mild acid solution um, that we'll, we'll put on those parts to get them prepped. This guy is the spare. I'm gonna leave him with no rivets. This one's in good shape, has all his rivets. Check this out. Three, two or three of the rims had this really neat green color underneath a layer or two of paint. It was kind of a shame to see that go. One of these had this white paint. As you can see, I still didn't get all of it. It was a bear to get that stuff off. Let's get the rivets on these things. Let's start here. All right, let's take a look at the situation here. Uh, number one, bing, rivets. These are supposedly German ones, which I don't talk German, but that looks like it to me. Got the rivets. Well, I keep saying rivets like that's the whole thing. Really, it's about the clips and the rivets hold the clips in, but I think that probably goes without saying. At any rate, here's the actual rivet. Here's the actual clip. We also need this guy, the special handy dandy rivet tool with that little cutout thingy there. And it's meant to go in a vise. And then we just don't wanna set everything up so that all we gotta do is pound the other end of the rivet. Ribbit, bibbit, bibbit, bibbit rivet we want to pound the other end of the rivet that's on the inside of the rim and we want to pound it low enough that it's not going to interfere with mounting the wheel to the drum so let's take a look at that thingy this is the clippy i want my rivet tool to be something like this i have dealt with rivets a bit before in case you noticed in the other videos there's a vintage airstream in my life <laughs> so yeah I've dealt with aluminum rivets, solid rivets, sometimes called buck rivets, and I've used a few. I haven't done these. I think this is how I want this to go, except this way. So if I go like this, that means the rim's gonna be over here. All right, so there's my rivet tool with my rivet sitting in it. Like this. Have some wood blocks over here to support the rim. Let's try this. Okay, bigger hammer. I don't get to use this guy very much. He's the persuader. I'm gonna use the punch to reach down in there. Oh, 
I don't think that's done. Well, that's about as far in as I think it'll go. See if we're tight. Yeah, that's not good. It's working a little bit. So I'm not terribly happy with how that went, but pounding that rivet with the air hammer did tighten things up. The clip is not all the way down like I'd like it to be. So that's aggravating. I don't know if there was a burr or something underneath there that caused that. I'm hoping to do a better job of it than this. This may be one of those deals where I'm just being too careful. Let's try that. I'm gonna inspect this one first. Okay, we're getting closer on this little project. By the time I do the last rivet, I'll probably be pretty good at it. So here's the problems that I've been facing. Big hammer is needed. Okay, check. Got the big hammer. Got it. Problem is the big hammer doesn't go all the way to the rivet and end up square. It's at an angle. So I don't I don't want to hammer it this way. I want the head of the hammer to be square to the rivet. This seemed like a good idea if I could keep it on the spot, but it was bouncing all over. I don't want to bang up the rim. This is just a 12 inch spike, but this is the most accurate thing that I've found so far. I can hit it right where I need to every time. I'm not having an issue with the rivet standing above this little divot here, so I'm not concerned about that. That's good news. But I got two rivets or two clippy clips on this rim now. This rim is done. Ooh, this is gonna be tight. Hubcap tool thing. Okay. I gotta be happy with that. This one got bent a little bit. I'm gonna do that one some. All right, cool. So I'm a little happier with this. It's a little more work than the way I've seen other people do it, but I like this result. Now this one is a little bit proud. So I'm gonna take the straight edge and run it over. It doesn't touch anything, so I'm good. That looks comparable to this original one here. This looks perfect. That's an original one. That might have been a breakthrough. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! I got two more. <laughs> I gotta show you this. Number one, I found it good to pitch the rim a little this way. So I added this piece here. It seemed like the edge of this tool was hitting against the edge of the rim. There's a little bit of a notch, but it's not deep enough. 
So I could grind that down or what I've done is just tilted the rim to clear that. I wanna make sure that goes all the way down. So now for the fun part. This failed a little bit earlier. Seemed like a good idea, but it was dancing all over the place, right? Well, it turns out you can hold this and it, well, I'm holding it and it doesn't hurt. Your mileage may vary, but watch this. Oh, that's so good. All right. Going with that. I remember what it is. Phosphoric acid. Ta-da! Done. Now that I've figured it out, I'm done. That was the soapy water phase. Now I've rinsed it off and it may be hard to see right now, but the flash rust has already started. See that kind of brown tinge, especially to this cast iron on the drums, but it's on the rims too. Never fear, what I'm doing next, we'll etch that off. It's called a rust converter. It's phosphoric acid. I'm gonna put that on there for a little while. There's really not any rust left to convert. The big thing is to etch the surface just a little bit more than the sandblasting already did. Rinse it really, really good, then get things hung up to dry overnight. I don't know what your coronavirus experience is here in late March, but mine is turning out to be a lot of work. So for that, I really can't complain. Some people have no work, some people are ill or worse, but for me today, at this moment, <laughs> I wanna be here doing this. Almost through the entire first coat, that little four ounce can did the front and back of five rims, two drums, four hubcaps, brackets for dweezel, one backing plate, the bearing caps, spreader bars, e-brake bars, and that little piece there. Moving right along. We're all 
all set with the POR 15. I got two coats on most of it, one coat on the non-critical stuff like these hubcaps here. Backing plates, two coats, the hardware, two coats. The rims are what I focused on. They've got two good coats. Now I just need to put a dust coat of primer on here so that the top coat of Rust-Oleum will stick. I'm gonna try the clean metal primer and see if I end up with a smoother finish. In a day or two, I'll do the top coat of Rust-Oleum and be done with it. my dust coat and I have about I don't know third of a can of paint left that's too much to throw away so I need to keep it from clogging and what they say to do <laughs> is turn it upside down and spray until there's no more paint coming out <clears throat> that's kind of like duck and cover to me it doesn't do any good it still ends up clogging here's what I have found that does work Take the tip and bathe it in some lacquer thinner. So, ugh, I'll take, <laughs> I could have been bad. <laughs> I'll take a, the cap of the can and end up filling it up as I get some lacquer thinner inside there. Wipe off the front of the tip just to get what I can here. And then take compressed air. Close your eyes and blow that lacquer thinner through the nozzle. Twice. All right, so I'm gonna do it again. Also good to do this on the, the tip up here on the actual dilly do the can. Let that soak a second. This I think actually gets the paint out, and while it's not a hundred percent. I have a much better track record being able to use this can of paint again in a reasonable amount of time than if I just did the turn it upside down and hope. Now this last step probably makes no difference. Leave the tip in some lacquer thinner and it just evaporates. This is just for my feelings. That works for me. Two nights in a row, I have successfully carved out some time to work on the bus, and that's pretty cool because tonight we are rounding out two weeks of working on this project. This is one a little different than normal where I'm trying to keep it short, trying to avoid making it some huge drawn out project like so many of my projects turn into. We're trying to get this thing on the road quick. As you can see, the POR15 and the primer dust coat is done. That was last night. Tomorrow night, I'm gonna do the top coat. Uh, it's good for it to cure for a day or two, preferably two. So I'm gonna do that, but I wanna include some things tomorrow that I'm just giving a top coat of gloss black on it. And that is this tank. This is the thing that needs some prep work. And I'm also gonna throw in this balancer plate. I don't see much reason to do the whole POR15 routine on that. This I have to work on. When I took this thing out, I did a cursory inspection through the hole here, and it looked pretty good to me, which is great. That was great news, but <laughs> it's not as likely to rust all over the bottom there, except in like if there was water in the fuel for a long time, then it would rust in the bottom. But the air had access to the top of this, and there actually is some surface rust in there. So we're gonna get a good look at that. I've got a cheapy endoscope thingy thing that I've used to, well, most recently I dropped a bolt down into an intake manifold. That's a big no-no, but the endoscope was very helpful <laughs> in finding which of the ports it went down into and that it was in fact there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab that thing and we'll get a good look at the rust inside 
this tank and then we're going to set about solving the various issues that it has. First things first, let's take a look at the inside of the tank. This is the filler neck. I see a little bit of corrosion here, but I don't think that's the rust that we're looking out for. Oh, here's a better view. Okay, so here's the surface. Looks sort of kind of decent. There's a little bit of rust. Kind of make out the brown there. And but there's some head right up close. All right, so now we're getting down into the tank. And it looks pretty okay. That's the top. Because, yeah, there's me with one of my fingers over there. The top has a little bit of surface rust there. Not too bad. So I could probably get away with just leaving it alone. Let's look down in here. Here's the bottom. Pretty nice. So this area would get really bad if there was water sitting in the tank. So let's turn this thing around and look at the top. And yeah. This looks good over here. But over here, I'm seeing some rust. There's some. So a little bit of surface rust in there. I have a choice to make. So I want to get rid of that surface rust. Well, I think I do. Since I have the opportunity, I got the thing out, right? Since there's a little bit of varnish in there, I'm going to try out using acetone to dissolve that and then flush it all out. I'm going to plug the holes so I can sit it like this outside and fill it with a weak solution of muriatic acid and I'll just leave it overnight. And that'll eat that rust away. And then rinse, 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 rinse like crazy <laughs> tomorrow and uh, then paint the thing tomorrow night. Looks like I've missed something here. This isn't going to thread all the way down, so I need a spacer. Sorry for the poor lighting, uh, we're <laughs> who cares? <laughs> we're gonna get the weak muriatic acid solution out of this and rinse it. Gonna rinse it really, 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 really good. Take this guy off and start to rinse. So let's talk about this tank for a little bit. It's a repop. It's thin and the stampings are really not all that great. While it's functional for my purpose, it's nothing to write home about. It wasn't heavily rusted inside and it wasn't heavily tarnished. It wasn't full of gook. I've dealt with tanks like that, but this one just wasn't there. And even if it was, it wouldn't have been worth that level of effort. This tank was cut in half <laughs> to put this toolbox in here. And I did the sealant thing, and that was over a decade ago. So some people have had horrible experiences with sealant and going through all the effort to refurb a tank, but I'm telling you, if the tank is worth it, if it's an original or the last one on earth or all you've got or whatever, then all that stuff can really help. But this tank, yeah, it's, it's gonna fail someday. It's just too thin. I think it's fine for now, 
But if I want to redo a tank and really, really redo a tank, let's see, where is it? I've got the original for this bus. Now it's in terrible shape, but again, I think that makes it worthy of all of the, oh, we're getting there, rinsing. I think that makes it worth all the efforts that it would take to really, really refurb this guy. It's thick. It doesn't have to have those tacky supports that they weld in. This one actually has the hump, so that's cool. That's going to have a little bit more capacity. I think it's thicker, too. Like, I can feel that it's thicker. It's just this one had one of those nightmare sealing jobs. Something didn't go right, and it's rusty. <laughs> and there's sealant peeling off. I don't know how I would refurb that, but I'd figure it out. So anyway, that's the deal with the tank. It's a, eh, okay, gag a little bit and do it this way. I have one more thing to paint, and that's this guy right here. The next day and it's hot it's gonna be like this for about seven or eight months <laughs> mid 90s today into March Ugh. so the wheels look good I think I've learned a little bit about spraying rust-oleum people who actually know about paint I, I think I lost them as soon as I started shaking the can <laughs> With this round of painting done, next time we should see what kind of trouble we can find underneath the bus. There's some important stuff under there, so you'll want to see what comes next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.